Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how metallic muscles work and even using the same metal to run an engine. And I'd like to thank Mine for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. I have some wire that you might have heard of here called nitinol. This is a nickel titanium alloy. It's called a shape memory alloy. Shape memory alloys are really neat. When you bend them out of shape, they can return to the original shape that they were set in. Now this forceful straightening of the shape memory alloy can be useful when you put it in the shape of a spring. So it has a certain spring constant before it deforms, but just like any other spring, if you pull it too far, it'll stay deformed. So if you do this to a normal spring, then you have to get a new spring, it's ruined. But watch what happens when I heat this up now. Then it goes back to its original shape. Then if you deform it and just put it in a bucket of water, this happens. Look how fast this happens. <laughs> That's so cool. So you can see how forcefully this wants to go back to its original shape. So let's see if we can actually use this to lift something. And then we'll see if we can actually use the same force to move a motor. So a motor that's powered by just warming up the metal. I have here a cup attached to my spring. You can see that if I move it with its normal spring constant, it'll spring back up. But if we move it too far, it deforms. Okay, so now it's really deformed. But I can heat it up now. and it comes right back up. So we know it can lift the cup up easily, but now let's put some heavy weights in there and see how much it can lift. Okay, let's put some rocks in here. It's very much stretched out. Let's see what happens when we heat it up. Three, two, one. Look at it lift it up. Whoa. <laughs> it easily lifted those rocks up just by heating up the wire. Okay, let's fill it up even more now. Now let's see what happens. Three, two, one. It's still lifting it. Whoa, look at that power to lift all these rocks up. So this is literally like a muscle that contracts and holds it there. Now it's pretty inconvenient to have to use a heat gun to lift those rocks up. If you wanna actually use this in a robot or something, you don't wanna to have to apply a heat gun to it or some other heat source, but you wanna use electricity. So for example, let's say I stretch my string out like this. If I want to compress it with heat now, I just run a bunch of amps through it. <laughs> Look at that. And it can actually do a lot of work as well. So let's say I want to lift these rocks up. I just turn on my power and it lifts them right up. <laughs> so cool. You can see that you can easily use this nitinol to do work and lift things up. But could you use it to run some sort of an engine? Well, actually, yes. Before we continue, let me tell you a little bit more about our sponsor, Mine. Mine is the smart data assistant that allows you to discover where your data is kept and allows you to keep it only where you want it. With the number of data breaches nowadays, I don't want my data lying around with services I don't use. With Mine, you can easily exercise your data rights and reclaim your right to be forgotten by deleting your data from services you no longer use. The way Mine works is you actually have the right to reclaim your data from any company that has it. This is thanks to the privacy regulations like the GDPR and the CCPA. Normally you have to do this through an official data subject request, but Mine makes it much easier for you to complete that request and reclaim your data. Mine sends these requests directly through your inbox and not a third party. So let me show you how this works. So there's 136 companies that have my data. I never could have known that there were that many. If you're not sure about the service, you can click on it to learn a little bit more about it. You can even see the risk of the data exposure, especially for the companies that hold your financial data. Okay, I have not used this in forever, so I don't want them having my data anymore. So I'll go through the reclaim process. So in this way, I minimize my risk and my online exposure, and I know my individual risk as well. 
If you want to try out mine for yourself, I'll put a link in my description or you can go to samemine.com. It's free now, but it won't be in a few months. Now let's get back to our experiment. So what I have here is two wheels with a piece of nitinol wire wrapped around it. And this wire is set to be straight. So when I heat it up, it's going to want to straighten out. Now watch what the result of this is when I only put one side of it in hot water. So now watch when I stick this in here. Whoa, look how fast it's going. So because the wire is trying to straighten out, it makes the wire a little bit looser on one side of the wheel. And so it creates a torque on the wheel that spins it. And as it spins, it pulls more wire into the hot water. And then as the wire raises up in the ambient air around the larger wheel, it cools down and so it doesn't create a torque on that larger wheel up top. So in order to get the engine to work, you need a hot end and a cold end. This type of engine is called a nitinol engine. So just with a warm cup of water, you can get an engine to run. Because of the fact that these shape memory alloys can return to the shape that they were originally in when you heat them up, they also exhibit another interesting phenomenon called pseudo-elasticity or even super-elasticity. You'll notice that at room temperature, I can pull this nitinol and it deforms and stretches out. But then I can heat it up and it goes back to its original shape. But what's interesting is once it's hot like this, notice how I pull it really hard and it just springs right back. It's really elastic now. But if I take this ice cube and cool it down now, now it can stretch out. So when it was warmed up, it became super elastic. I could stretch it down as hard as I could and it still sprang back up to where it was originally set. Now for this specific alloy here, that means that you need to keep it above around 100 degrees Celsius to be super elastic. So you can actually tweak the titanium and nickel in the nitinol alloy to have the shape memory effect at a different temperature. You can even make it so that it has the shape memory effect at room temperature. So this is a nitinol wire that has its shape memory effect at room temperature. So what that means, it's kind of like the wire now that I had heated up at 100 degrees Celsius that was super elastic. So at room temperature, it has a super elastic effect, which means I can't deform it. Watch what happens when I try to bend it. it just shoots back up with a really great force. Try to fold it in half. Look at that. Completely straight. So this is called super elasticity. Normal metals can bend a little bit without deforming. You can see that I can push down on this copper wire and it springs back up. But if I do it a little bit too much, then it just bends down permanently. So this is called plastic deformation. With the nitinol wire, that doesn't happen. You can see that it's elastic, but even when I do it really far, it's still elastic. The reason this plastic deformation happens is because the force becomes too much and the atoms need to move out of the way. And so they actually start to break atomic bonds within the crystal lattice of the metal here. But once you've broken those atomic bonds, it doesn't remember where they need to go again. It's permanently deformed. But for nitinol, a cool thing happens. It's able to relieve that pressure in the metal without breaking the atomic bonds. When the nitinol is above its shape transition temperature, it's in this nice pattern of squares. And this is called austenite. But then when you drop the temperature lower than its transition temperature, it changes just a little bit. The atoms shift a little bit into rhombuses instead of squares. Now the martensite is really interesting because when you put stress on it, the atoms don't just break the bonds between their neighboring atoms like a normal metal would do. But what they can actually do is shift a whole row of those rhombuses to flip the other direction. So you can get the wire to bend however you want, but you're actually not breaking any atomic neighboring bonds in here. But what you're doing is just shifting around those rhombuses in that martensite there. So the atoms still remember where they're supposed to be when they're heated up. So because each of these atoms never lost its neighbor somewhere getting bonded to another atom somewhere else, it can remember the shape it was in. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a second channel I have where I do videos similar to this one, but I make them really short, less than a minute long. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.